nerd culture really has become pop culture. And what's fascinating is how a lot of stories for the longest time were uncool have now exploded in popularity with millions of people reinterpreting the stories and putting their own spin on it and yelling at each other over the internet and starting their own nerd cult. Uh, which, going off of that, I so hate the idea of true fans and if you haven't seen this, you're not a true fan. Oh, you're not a real nerd if you don't get this joke. I so hate that because there's so much out there. Not everyone's gonna have seen everything, especially if you're younger. And uh, it's a very easy way to turn people off, I find. I get people like the memes like, oh, if you don't like this, then you're wrong. <sighs> Can't stand it. <laughs> Anyways, that's my little rant. But just for fun, no hierarchy. I decided to list a bunch of franchises and different genres and comment on them. Just my experience with them. A lot of stuff I have seen, mostly because I, for the longest time I was lonely and I get obsessive over stuff. I'm sure you guys do too. I love the people who've been in. I like this YouTube comment section. It's surprisingly positive. Yay. Uh, who knows? That's probably going to change soon because, oh, the internet can go from zero to kill you in a second. Ah. Anyways, just informal lists talking about franchises. I've noticed the big few, for what I've seen, the big two franchises that really seem to have gotten the ball rolling were Doctor Who and Star Trek. Uh, going up, that's, I, both of those I believe started in the 60s. Star Trek especially really kicked off fan culture and, <laughs> and shipping. Though I'm sure that's been around, it's just that really brought it to what we know it today. I actually have not seen Old Who, but I have seen New Who. <laughs> New Who. <laughs> Sounds like Dr. Seuss. There was a Doctor Who. I've seen all of Christopher Eccleston's run as the Doctor. I've seen a good chunk of David Tennant's run as the Doctor. Maybe one or two episodes of Matt Smith. So I have not seen Peter Capaldi. I'm really excited to see the new actress. I don't know if I missed anyone in between there. I'm actually not that active with the fandom. Uh, but Doctor Who, though, I like... It has really good ideas, but I often don't get the setups. I get the basic gist of it. It's a, a you know, run away from your life uh, with this time-traveling doctor and experience all these different worlds and sets, settings, which, cool ideas. There was one particularly cool one, a Titanic in space. That was very interesting because it had some very cool ideas on you know, of a, on, you know, who, who gets to live, who gets to die, which you see in a lot of franchises. Well, big franchises tend to comment on humanity a lot, so, yay. In a, in a very unique, effective, and yet surprisingly similar way. And meanwhile, Star Trek, kind of, I feel like they're, Doctor and Star Trek do have some similarities. They're both, both sci-fi shows, both started in the 60s, both have huge fan bases, uh, and both talk about ideas with, uh, both explore the natures of humanity in fantastical settings. I just, <laughs> you can argue the British version, the American version. Again, totally different, but just as an outsider, because I'm not really in the Star Trek fandom either, but I've seen the original, I have seen uh, Next Generation, I have seen maybe one episode of Deep Space Nine, and I've seen some of the new movies. So that's, I like the ideas they have, I like the characters, and it's, it's one of those, I've never really been a fan of, it took me a while to get into longer shows, because I really like sitcoms, so it, it, I, I had friends who got me into this stuff, so it's, okay, just go with the flow. Meanwhile, I'm not, I find the newer franchises, the newer really big ones, I'd say, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and you know, subsequently The Hobbit. So, Star Wars I actually saw a little bit later. I, fear, I, swear, I feel like my first introduction to Star Wars was in cartoons, because I used to read trivia for the shows I liked, and almost everything I watched growing up referenced Star Wars. Either they did the plot, either they had a reference, either they had characters, or jokes, or just flat out said, a, Star Wars just be, to show how nerdy a character was. So that one, I, I feel like it's inevitable <laughs> that you're gonna get exposed to Star Wars at some point. And hey, now look at the new trilogy. Hey, you're getting a trilogy of trilogies. You notice that? 
kind of be, I'm kind of bummed that you know that then you get the new spin-off movies <laughs> you can oh because there's a trilogy of trilogies now the numbers work so nicely oh maybe maybe you could just make them in threes just Star Wars trilogies you make keep making them in three like sneezes they come in threes sneezes and Star Wars movies that offend anyone I don't know <laughs> Harry Potter that is one I also got into it a little later but still when it was coming out it was I think the first two or three books had already been out by the time I was forced to read it I actually did not want to try new things my dad forced me to read them and I fell in love with it <laughs> So that's how that got started. Yeah, yeah, read all, read the books, seen the movies. I do, I guess because I read the books first, I do tend to like those more because you get more detail, you get more, you get more of the world, you get more characters, you get more loose ends tied up. I think my, by the way, for any, any Harry Potter fans who find this, my favorites are Chamber of Secrets and Goblet of Fire. Chamber of Secrets because it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I like, I like you getting deeper into the Wizarding World, but it's still really campy. It's still the kid's story. Goblet of Fire, because everyone's really awkward. They're experiencing their awkward teen years, which is endlessly hilarious. And, uh, and honestly, it do, that's, the, that's the transition period uh, from the lighter kids show, kids series, to the, the darker, more adult stuff. Wow, I think it's gonna be a long video because <laughs> I'm only at the beginning of the list, but there's a lot to talk about all these big franchises. There's, anyways, Lord of the Rings. In going on that, a lot of similarities. Uh, J.K. Rowling does borrow a lot from Tolkien, though a lot of people borrow from Tolkien. Though if you actually compare them, they are extraordinary, extraordinarily similar. Lord of the Rings. I actually read the Hobbit book. Uh, after the, I saw the movies, but it did, I did read the Hobbit book. I got two thirds of the way through Fellowship of the Ring, the book. And to be honest, I, I do prefer the movies. I think it's because I was exposed to that first and there's, I'm more interested in characters than I am plot generally. But Lord of the Rings, because the, there was one big bromance making those movies and it shows and it's fun to watch because of it almost more into the behind the scenes on that one. And the Hobbit movies. I like the second one. I like Desolation of Smaug. I feel like the Hobbit did not need to be three movies. But there's so many, there are good scenes in each of them. I feel like you could cut together one really tightly put together Hobbit movie from the three. Because I love the riddle scene with Gollum. I love anything with Smaug because those were the big cool scenes. <laughs> and and not for the obvious reasons, by the way, Sherlock fans. Uh, uh, for non-Sherlock fans, Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman in Sherlock also share scenes as Bilbo and Smaug. It's, it's not that it is. It's the scenery. It's the atmosphere. It's, those were the big scenes. So engaging to watch. And plus powerhouse performances, amazing special effects, amazing storytelling. It's just funny. I talk about the visuals a lot, but I'm generally more interested in the writing but it takes me a little bit longer to formulate my opinions on that and do these right away <laughs> anyways uh, next on the list another big franchise is coming up Marvel Cinematic Universe and DC interesting enough I, I haven't I've watched the movies generally I'm more watching these if I if someone takes me to these movies or it's so or I go by association I don't I've seen a couple I, but I don't really follow it as closely as other stuff it's not bad by any means it's I'm just more it's just not as much my thing because I like I love the superhero genre but I like I tend to like more of the comedic angle and I do I do I've, I've seen so many dark and gritty reboots I like to see I like the combination of light and dark the best. And if so, it's, they're good. Um, oh, I'm running out of time. So I'm probably gonna split these into uh, two parts. So, I don't think YouTube allows for videos more than 10 minutes. I'm not sure. Anyways, pausing for now. I'm gonna continue this. <laughs> 